Hello everyone, welcome to the second PUC online classes of GSI Mysore. I am Suma, Economics Lecturer. In the today's session of Microeconomics, that is Introduction to Microeconomics, let us discuss about the features between the different types of economies and also about the positive and normative economics. These two are the different types of the economics. In our previous session, we have discussed about the three different problems of an economy that is the central problems of an economy. They are what to produce, how to produce and for whom to produce. So, after knowing that we understood about the different types of economies and they are the central Centrally planned economy and it is also called as the socialist economy or government economy and the other one is market economy or the capitalist economy and the third one that is about mixed economy. So now let us see about how the market economy is different from the centrally planned economy. The centrally planned economy is one in which the government owns the means of production. In the case of market economy, the private sector or the private people and the private investors own the means of production. You all know that there are different means of production and they are the factors of the production like land, labor, capital and organization. In the case of government economy, they are all owned by the government sector and in the case of the market economy, all these means of production are owned by the private sector and the second difference is no element of competition in the case of government economy there is no element of competition at all because it is for the social welfare but in the case of market economy there exists perfect competition in many a cases so perfect competition is the style of market economy and every other individual investor wishes to earn more profit. So here the profit motive exists. The third important difference is that in a government economy there exists the social welfare motive. The government wants to give social benefits to the, the residents of the nation wherein in the case of the market economy you can see that every private investor who owns the means of production is involved in making profit only. So, the ultimate goal of market economy is to make profits. And the fourth difference is that in the case of government economy, we see the planning mechanism. Here, the planning, central planning authority or the government takes the decisions related to the production of the goods. In the case of market economy, there exists a price mechanism because here the market forces decide the price fixation and also they decide about the quantity to be produced and also even about the goods that are to be produced. So when we were dealing with the topic of what to produce, we also learned that the economy decides whether to produce the capital goods or consumer goods. Consumers, consumer goods are those goods which reach the consumer as a final product and they are manufactured for the ultimate benefit of the consumer. In the case of capital goods, these goods are yet to undergo the production process and when these capital goods are produced, they will pass through the production process and then after that only it becomes the consumer goods. So, the economy here decides, the market economy decides about the price mechanism and also about what type of goods are to be produced and in what quantities. And after knowing about these two, there is one more type of economy that is mixed economy. So mixed economy is a pattern of economy where we can find the coexistence of both the government economy as well as market economy. It is a coexistence of the socialist as well as capitalist 
economies in our country of india we can see the mixed type of economy but in reality all the other countries are having the mixed economy pattern now let us see about the examples for centrally planned economy the countries which are practicing the centrally planned economy or the government economy are the north korea china cuba and vietnam in the case of market economy that is existing in many of the countries let us see few examples and they are the usa canada united kingdom australia etc so japan is also having the market economy in our country we have mixed economy existing now let us come to the other two types of the economics the economics that we deal in the microeconomics are again divided into two that they are positive economics and normative economics so positive economics is one which deals with the economic issues related to past present and future and in the case of normative economics it is just the opinion of the economists as to what decision to be taken for the future progress and it is the opinion of the economists related to the economic issues it is one which deals with the past present and future so what was there and what is here and what should be there in future but here what ought to be done what ought to be there so the second difference between the positive economics and the normative economics is that the positive economics deals with the how are the economic problems solved so what was the problem and how are they are solved and now at present what is the economic problem and how is that going to be solved and in future what type of economic problems may arise and in what way we are going to solve it but in the case of normative economics it deals with the what what is ought to be done that is in future what should be done for this problem next one is the positive economics is descriptive one everything will be described here and it is finding a solution and it is very closer to the truth in the case of the normative economy it is a policy economy it is involved with making policies related to the future economic issues in the case of positive economy the facts and figures are verified for truth the facts and figures of the positive economy can be easily checked for truth all these statements of positive economics can be used as the answers for just true or false questions but in the case of normative economics these normative economic statements cannot be verified at all and they cannot give a perfect answer for the true or false questions so it is just an opinion normative economics or normative statements are just opinions but the positive economics are the real facts so the positive economics is very close to the reality when compared to the normative economics to understand this positive and normative economics i'll give you an example in the case of positive economics anyone can give a perfect answer as i said it is just as simple as we are answering to the true or false question see for example if anybody says that the population of sri lanka is greater than india so then it is just a false statement you all know that sri lanka is a small country and india is a large country with huge population and the population of india is obviously greater than the sri lankan population so if anybody says that sri lanka's population is greater than india it is a false statement so therefore it is very simple that we can give a correct and perfect answer for the statements that come under positive economics but when we come to the question of normative economics let me see let me give you an example here there will be a statement that old age pensions should be stopped in india if any economist suggests to improve the economy the government should stop the old age pension so it is a policy economy and any economist may suggest this policy to the government but is it 
possible uh, as we give for a true or false question because if we stop the old age pension it will disturb growth of people's lives in our country because because of the help of this old age pension many of the senior citizens are living and they are getting their food and their necessary things are necessary demands are met with so it cannot be stopped so again when a policy is done with an ambiguous statement like this then there will exist the opponents also and with you cannot give a perfect answer for this statement lots of arguments we can see that this policy will not come into exist so therefore we have to check out about the reality and positive economics is very closer to the reality so positive economics and normative economics are differing like this with each other i wish to end up today's session with a thought for the day the thought for today is life is about accepting the challenges along the way choosing to keep moving forward and savoring the journey so this thought says you that you have to accept the challenges that come on your way because you all know that a challenge becomes an obstacle only when we bow our head to the challenge so it is to accept the challenges which come on our way in a bold way and we have to choose to keep moving forward savoring the journey we have to enjoy or we have to take the taste of the journey because life is a journey full of obstacles struggles success failures everything so it is a combination of both victory and failure many a times we may not win and then also we have to overcome that failure with the help of the attitude of facing the challenges because whatever that hurts you today or whatever that makes you to suffer with a pain today will definitely lead towards success tomorrow so we should not give up and this statement says you that you should develop a never give up attitude so with this i conclude this session thank you